He is the man himself, Pops, John Witherspoon. John, how are you doing today? Thanks for having me. I'm doing fine. Thank you. All right, all right. Hey, so, I mean, I know you've been doing this for a while. You've been doing stand-up. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so how, how did you first get started? How did you first get started with stand-up? Well, you know, I was an a actor first. I was in an acting class, and, the, and the, the, the coach of the acting class said he's doing a comedy special this year. He do it every year, and he wants me to think of something that's funny um, to, to, you know, to be in his show. And uh, I said, man, I don't know anything about comedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. See, that's then funny. I, then I saw the something, and I, I stole the show. I said, wait a minute. I might make, be able to make some money in comedy now. But yeah. I was more of a Shakespearean actor. I was doing Shakespearean stuff. Yeah, and you were like a blues. Like, you like to play, like, jazz instruments, right? Is that, is that yeah, right? Well, I, well, actually, you know, in the class, it was a Shakespearean class. But oh. I, I played in the school. In school, I played the French horn and, and French horn and trumpet. Oh, Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Can you quote any Shakespeare for us? Do you have any to memory? To be or not to be, that is the question. But it is nobler in the mind of suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortunes or take up arms against a sea of trouble and by opposing in them. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Pryor is what I wanted to ask you about next. Right, uh-huh. Yeah, so in your opinion, I know you're a good friends with Richard Pryor. I mean, what yeah, made, what I, used made, op- I used to open for him. Yeah, what made him so unique? I mean, why do people love him so much? Well, he was free, you know, everybody else was telling old jokes. Uh, Flip Wilson and, and, and Red Fox were telling old jokes. Yeah. Richard Pryor was real, you know. He was like Lady Bruce. Came to that era with Lady Bruce and then what he was telling reality, you know, instead of old jokes. You can find you can find all of Flip Wilson jokes in a book. <laughs> and Red Fox had an old, uh, you know, blues, uh, blue joke, joke book, and he got his jokes on, but he was great at it. They were both great at it. Yeah. But Richard Pryor came out there being free spirit. Yeah. You think he say, he was willing to say things that a lot of other people weren't willing to say? Wouldn't say. No, no. Everybody yeah. knew the punchline on, on, on Red, Red Fox and stuff. But not everybody, but a lot of people knew the punchline if you knew anything about old jokes. But Richard Pryor, you didn't know what he was going to say. <laughs> Shocked the hell out of people. Yes, he did. <laughs> now, also the Wayans too. You did a lot of work with the Wayans. I don't yeah. know if you still are. I mean, how did you first get involved with them? You know, what, what made it work so well? I mean, well, you know, I was at. I used to hang out at the uh, uh, Laugh Factory Comedy Club, and Sean Wayne used to be down there. And Sean told me one night, he said, "I got this TV show. I want you to play my father." I said, "Yeah, okay, sure." <laughs> Same thing that uh, Ice Cube said about Friday. He said, "I want you to play my father," and I said, "Okay, yeah, sure." That's right. And then, Will you be my father? Then, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, <That's> sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so they finally called me and said, uh, you know, I want you to, we got this movie, and uh, I want you to play the daddy. I said, oh, really? They sent me a script, and then the rest is history. Because so we shot the whole movie in 20 days, and oh. and we only got about $5,000 for the first Friday. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and so you know, I went on to, uh, you know, back to work on the road and doing... You know, then the Mar- Sean and Marlon came, called me to do their stuff, so I need that paper. That's right. <laughs> I've done so many music videos, you know, and, it, and what's so good about it, you know, they, they check clears real good. <laughs> the rappers got a lot of money. Two chains. Two yeah, chains. that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love, uh, uh, I could play the piano. I started playing piano when I was 50 years old, so I play a lot of uh, classical music. And I love uh, the old uh, R&B songs from, like, The Temptations. Oh, yeah. I grew up with The Temptations in Detroit. That's my hometown, Detroit. That's, oh, I grew yeah. up with them. d I, I knew uh, Marvin Gaye. I, I met Marvin Gaye. I met Diana Ross and the Supremes, Smokey Robinson, all the Motown people. Stevie Wonder. So I listen to all kind of music. I like um, Johnny Mathis. I like Nat King Cole, Sammy David, Frank Sinatra. Oh, they're, they're, now Frank Sinatra. Now you're talking. I'm just a big fat Guido over here. So I, like, I met yeah. uh, I met Frank Sinatra in Beverly Hills one time. Yeah, really cool. He came. He got out of his car. He's about to get back in his car. I said, "Can I speak to you?" He said, "Yeah, come over, gave me, shook my hand, everything." Oh, so what? Um, cool. I mean, do you? Is there any chance that you might be putting out your own rap album if you're listening to Two Chains? Do you freestyle? Well, I, I have a new album out, but it's been out a couple years. It's called Sixty Three Cents. And I'm a, I, when I when I my show tonight I'm gonna sell some uh, on my show. There you go. Sixty three right. cents. Can you give us a little freestyle? Do you have any? Uh, uh, dance now with your big old ass. Oh, dance now, girl, with that big old ass. That's it. That's, that's all you get for sixty. Go in the bathroom. Please <laughs> don't go in the bathroom. Don't nobody go in the bathroom for the next thirty five, forty five oh, minutes. Damn. <laughs> that's all you get. That's sixty three cents right that's there. Sixty three yeah. cents. You want some more? You got to pay more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so now you are. You've had a really successful career. Are you planning on retiring, or are you still going to do it? You should keep Oh going? no, I never retire. No. 
Just getting started. Yeah. Oh just no, I never retired because that's I'm making money now. And I'm making the money that I supposed to made a long time ago. Five thousand dollars <laughs> a movie. Right. I got I got to make up. I got to I got another fifteen years before I even get break even. Are you a big tweeter? Are you a Twitter guy? My, yeah, my my kid tweets for me because I haven't learned how to do that yet. So yeah. he's. He yeah. comes over here and I tell him what to do. Or he called me and I tell him what to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, then he want his he want his fifty dollars every week. Yeah. Oh wow, tweeting, fifty bucks tweeting for me. Two hundred bucks a month to tweet. Yeah, I tell him. I said, man, you what you saying? He said, I say a lot. I man. said, let me check. I got found out how to get to the tweeter so I can see if you're really tweeting right. I'll do it for twenty bucks. <laughs> twenty bucks a week. <laughs> my son, my my black son, got to go. Get rid of that black son. Good. <laughs> uh, in your opinion, what is the importance of PR? Oh, you got to have PR because no one will ever know where you are. What you're doing, what you what you what you like, what you dislike, uh, how much money you got. Yes. Then, <laughs> you know, so you need the publicist uh, to get into uh, jobs, like to get into the Academy Awards. There you go. That's you right. Know, you want to get into the the Golden Globe. You want to get you. You need the publicist to get you these tickets. That's right. Got Hi, to hire us. We'll get you free stuff too. It's yeah. imperative that you you have a publicist. Yes. Thank you. Please check him out. Check him out on Twitter. The man himself, John Witherspoon. John, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I've had a lot of fun.